So if you find this sleep story helpful or interesting, then give it a thumbs up, leave any comments that you've got below. And if you aren't already, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you can receive notifications of when future sleep stories go live. I have dozens and dozens of stories already on my channel that you can go and search. I also release new stories every single week. So I hope you enjoy this story. Just take a moment to close your eyes and begin to get yourself comfortable. And as you get comfortable, I don't know whether you'll drift deeper asleep to the sound of my voice or to the spaces between my words. But as you begin to comfortably drift asleep, I'm just going to tell this story in the background. And this story is about you finding yourself walking through a park. And you're walking along through this park in the edge of a town, walking down towards a duck pond. And as you walk towards that duck pond, so you can notice the sounds of each footstep. You can hear the sounds of birds in the trees, perhaps the sounds of the rustling leaves. You can see people out walking their dogs. Some people throwing things for their dogs. Different dogs chasing after bulls and sticks. Some running straight past the bulls and sticks. Some just watching the bull or stick being thrown and just sitting there. And you can see children in the park. And different people doing different things in the park, just enjoying themselves. And you can notice what kind of day it is, and whether there's any clouds in the sky. As you continue walking down towards that duck pond, and as you get closer to the duck pond, so you can notice the sounds of the ducks, Notice the different types of ducks. Perhaps there's a swan or two in that duck pond. Maybe watching on, hoping those swans line themselves up just right. So that they're facing each other or just crossing each other's path. And for a split second, perhaps looking like a love heart. And hearing the sound of ducks landing in that pond. And watching as ducks take off. And you walk around that duck pond to find a bench. And you find that bench and sit down on the bench. Relaxing watching the ducks and feeling yourself just drift deeper into the experience. And as you watch ducks land and take off, so you begin to imagine what that must be like. And as you imagine what it must be like to land or take off from the water like that, you notice your eyes flickering and your eyelids closing and your breathing relaxing. You notice yourself drifting inside your mind. And as you drift inside your mind, so you begin to have that sense 
of being a duck on that pond, a sense of buoyancy, of floating, of kicking your legs under the water, and then kicking faster and faster and then stretching out your wings and your body rising slightly out the water and flapping your wings and flapping harder and harder until you feel like you're running on the surface of the water, splashing that water back behind you, flapping your wings faster and faster before launching into the air, circling around, rising higher and flying rapidly through the air, hitting an updraft of warm air, circling faster and higher, and then being able to just glide up here, looking down, seeing that pond all the way down there, seeing the whole park, the trees in the park, seeing all the buildings further away outside the park, the roads. I'm having a sense of silence up here while gliding on an updraft and then being able to just pull your wings in beside your body, pointing your head down and diving down towards the ground, diving back down towards that park, and accelerating faster and faster, with that wind blowing through your feathers, before again having that precision control of extending your wings, tipping your head back slightly and swooping out of that dive and swooping back up, turning to the side, twisting around in the sky, flapping a few times to rise higher, to catch that updraft again, getting high in the sky again and surveying the ground below. And then after a while, you come back down to land, and you line up, you get lower, you tilt your wings slightly, extend your wings, slowing yourself down stretching your feet out in front of you, underneath you, and then sliding your heels through that water as you then pull your wings back in and bob a little bit to a halt, feeling that water holding you on the surface. And then you find yourself back inside your own mind again. And you open your eyes and gaze out over that pond. Then you stand up from the bench. And you continue to wander around that pond. And coming out on these walks gives you a time to think about things, to think about hopes and dreams, to work things through, to find a sense of peace and relaxation. And as you walk around that pond, so you have this sense of things changing of the seasons beginning to change, of spring moving to summer, 
moving through summer. With more flowers and smells. More vivid colours. More sounds of birds and animals. And then moving through to autumn. Noticing the way leaves begin to fall from the trees. The colours change. What people are wearing changes. Sounds of animals reduce. Then into winter. Noticing those early signs of snowfall. And as that snow increases, noticing the breath as you breathe out, noticing how quiet and peaceful winter is, with fewer people out walking, fewer animals around. And as the snow gets thicker, so it begins to muffle the sound more, making all sounds take on a dull quality, increasing that sense of relaxation. And then hearing the crunching of that snow with each footstep. Noticing footsteps of animals through the snow. And you decide to walk off the path. And walk in among the trees. And as you walk among the trees. Occasionally hearing. A slight rustling as the wind blows a breeze. You run your fingers around the bark of the trees. And then with one tree. You run your fingers around that tree. And feel like you've just flicked a switch on the tree. And you turn and have a look at that area of that tree. And you see this glowing, pulsating light. About waist height in that tree. And you put an arm through that portal. And then you step through the portal. And you find yourself up on a hillside, gazing around at rolling hills in all directions. And up between the hills in one direction, you notice what looks like a white palace. And you start walking down that hillside through long grass watching the way the grass appears to have waves passing through it as the wind blows across the hills. And you turn and gaze back at that portal and you just see this purple hazy light behind you and you know that that's the portal. And you realise you're somehow in a different land perhaps even a different dimension. And you walk down the hill as that grass gets longer, walking towards that palace. And you drop your hands down beside you, running your hands through the long grass, that tickle-touch feeling of that grass on the palm of your hands through your fingertips. 
just so gently touching and stroking the palms of your hands, the spaces between your fingers. As you continue to walk towards that palace and you can see an eagle flying overhead, just circling gracefully, occasionally hearing it make a noise, perhaps communicating with another eagle elsewhere. And as you walk through that long grass, so you notice that there's some trees off in the distance at a slightly different direction to that palace. And you decide that you're going to go that direction, explore the trees, and then head on to the palace. And the trees look very full of leaves. And very dense. And as you arrive near that wooded area, you notice that some of the trees seem to have ladders or steps heading up to them. And you realize that these trees are actually an entire community. That there's a whole town in this wooded area that have made the trees their home. With bridges between the trees. What looks like huts in the trees. Some larger than others. Some multi-story often wrapped around the trunks of the trees and in some cases spread among a few trees with walkways between sections. And you can see that it's very busy up there. That the community have shops, homes, areas for entertainment, kids playing and you climb up and walk around that tree village and the way it's been built you're surprised that they've made it in such a way that even when trees sway the structures themselves don't and you walk and talk to a couple of the people here as they explain about creating this village. That sometimes water from the nearby lake can flood as all the water drains off the hills. And it just made sense to build properties in a tree and a few people did that and then the community just grew and it felt closer to nature being up here high in the trees and it gave a totally different type of feeling up here in the trees and so it just stuck generation after generation and you're invited in to what you would describe as a tavern and you went in and you could see these people drinking having a good time socializing playing music And it really reminded you of some kind of fantasy place. And you headed down to continue your journey off to that palace. You thought you might come back here again some other time, but for now, 
you've got a journey to continue on. So you continue on your journey towards that palace. And as you walk towards that palace, following what's barely described as a road, you see a horse and cart and the back of that cart looks like what you might describe as a gypsy caravan or a covered kind of caravan with wood and material. And you're aware that whoever is transporting this probably lives there and this is probably their home. And they're not going particularly fast. And your walking pretty much catches up. And as you catch up, so you engage in conversation with the person who's just plodding along with their horse. And you ask about the caravan and they explain that they enjoy a nomadic lifestyle. They like knowing they can go where they want set up where they want, sleep where they want. They like knowing that they don't use all their resources in any one place. They can do what they want to do in one location, perhaps pulling up near a lake, doing some fishing, spending the night near the lake, having a campfire, cooking the fish on the campfire. And the next day they might be on the edge of a wood. And a day later they might be out in a meadow. And a day later they might go to a town and just park up on the outside of a town and go and spend some time in the town. And if they decide they want to travel somewhere they can just go and travel there. And they explained how they always learned that the journey is as important as the destination, perhaps even more so. And so you should enjoy the journey. And so although they have destinations from time to time, those destinations are really just part of their journey. And they're always on that journey. And by always being on the journey, they always have the pleasure of enjoying the journey. And you carry on your journey towards that palace. And as you arrive at the palace, so you notice how white the walls are. You notice the water surrounding the palace, the bridge over that water to the entrance of the palace. And the entrance is open and you walk over that bridge and into a courtyard area and then up to a large palace door and you knock on the door, and the door opens, and you walk straight in, and you don't know who opened the door, but you decide to go and explore, and you start walking around that palace, looking at statues, at different artwork. at pottery, different ornaments. You admire some of the rugs. And then you see a painting that catches your eye. Something's curious about that painting. And you rub your eyes slightly because 
All the other paintings seem perfectly fine. But as you looked at that painting, it seemed slightly blurry, almost out of focus. But as you looked at the other paintings, they all seemed fine. As you began to walk to that painting, your echoey footsteps, as you walk over to the painting. And you see in that painting what looks like a steam train going around a snowy mountain. And you look closer and closer to that painting. And as you look closer to the painting, so you have this sense of movement in the painting. And the closer you look, the more drawn in you feel. Until eventually you start hearing the sound of a steam train. And the clickety-clack of the train on the track and your cheeks almost feel a sense of the cold and then you notice a sudden judder and find yourself in that painting and realize as you turn around that you're sat on a chair you're sat on a seat inside a carriage on that steam train. And on one side of you, you can see the side of the mountain hurtling past you and out the other window. You can see a valley and mountains off in the distance. And you realize somehow that as you got close to that painting, you're transported inside the painting as if that painting itself was a portal and you've now become part of that painting you're now in the world inside that painting and that train hurtles into a tunnel where you can't see anything out of either window but you can hear the sound of that train hurtling through that tunnel and after what seems like ages that train exits the tunnel to a much flatter landscape but it exits into a snow blizzard And all you can see out the window is just thick snow falling all around you, seeing large snowdrops striking the glass. And then drops of water navigating their way down that glass. And some of the snowdrops remain whole as they fall down the glass and start gathering on the bottom. And every now and then as the train moves and changes direction slightly, the wind passing along the side of the train will dislodge and disrupt those snowflakes. And they'll slide along and then fall off the side of the glass. And then you can notice that train beginning to slow down. And notice the way the snow begins to fall more vertically as the train's slowing down. Until eventually that train pulls into a station. And you hear the train let out steam once it's come to a halt. And you go and get off that train and step out into that blizzard. 
and you grab a coat, wrap yourself up warm and start walking down the platform and following the way round to the exit, exploring this area you've ended up and you can barely see anything in front of you as this blizzard continues around you. You can just hear that crunching of each footstep through the snow. And you find your way to a light you can see in the distance. And you don't know where that is, but you want to find somewhere you don't even know where you are. So you find your way just following that hazy light in the distance. And as you begin to get closer, so you notice that that light seems to have a slight orangey tinge, as if maybe it's a property with a fire inside. Something that makes you feel it's going to be warm over there. And eventually you arrive and realize it's a cabin on the edge of a woodland. And you knock on the door of that cabin. And someone opens the door and invites you in. And as soon as that door's open, so you feel that warmth from the fire in that cabin and you notice the most beautiful glow in that cabin and you walk in and they take your coat hang your coat up and you go and warm your hands up and they offer you a warm drink and a seat by the fire and you go and sit down by the fire and you look over at that cat that looks just so cosy, lying on a mat in front of the fire. You imagine that it probably hasn't moved for ages, that it probably nabbed that spot, and didn't want to give that spot up for anything. And the person brings over a drink, and they don't seem at all surprised or concerned about who you are, where you're from. They're just incredibly friendly and kind to you. And you hold that drink in your hand, feeling the warmth radiating into your hands, bringing that warm drink up near your face, feeling the warmth of that as you Gently blow into that cup and the steam rises up to your face. Then having a drink of that drink, feeling the warmth of that. As it passes into your mouth, down your throat. Warming you from the inside out. And with each sip of the drink, so you feel this sense of warmth and relaxation. Relaxing deeper and deeper. And feeling so much more comfortable. And the person asks if you'd like a bed for the night. But hopefully this storm will pass by the morning. And you accept that offer. And they go away and then come back a little while later, saying that a room's ready for you. And you follow them through, and they show you to a room. And you can see the most comfortable looking bed, with what looks like the thickest, softest covers and blankets and pillows and cushions. And the room feels warm and pleasing. 
And it doesn't take you long to decide to relax down in bed and drift comfortably asleep. And as you drift comfortably asleep, so you begin to just drift and dream pleasant dreams. You start to dream about the cold outside, where you're wrapped up warm, but you imagine what it must be like in places that are always cold like that. And you imagine bears walking around in the snow. You imagine penguins huddling together, taking it in turns to move from the outside towards the middle, from the middle back towards the outside. And then having that realisation, they've got to go out into the cold sea to grab something to eat and then come back. And as you're drifting asleep, you feel so lucky that you get to remain in a warm place and that you don't have to live out in the cold all the time. And you just drift deeper and deeper into that sleep. And while you drift deeper asleep, that snowstorm begins to pass. And then in the morning you can hear the sounds of birds that gently wake you up. You rise up and you can smell the most beautifully cooked food and you realise the person's cooked you some breakfast and you eat that breakfast before deciding to go and explore. You know you're on the edge of woodland and you think it would be interesting to explore this woodland after so much snow. And so after you've eaten, you leave that cabin, you head into that snowy woodland, crunching your way into the woods, and are surprised at what a good job the woods did at keeping that snow at bay. Now it's just like there's a dusting of snow inside the woods where very little snow made it through the canopy. And yet all this snow surrounding you makes everything so quiet and peaceful. And as you walk through the woodland. So you notice a fallen down tree and you walk over towards that fallen down tree and realise that at the base of that tree is actually a door. And you slide down the bank into the gap left by that fallen down tree you stand face to face with that door. You open the door and you see some steps leading down under this area. And you begin to descend those steps. And you just happen to count back in your mind as you descend the steps as you walk down the twenty steps you just instinctively count back twenty, nineteen, eighteen, seventeen, sixteen, fifteen as you go deeper and deeper fourteen, thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten, nine, 
eight, going deeper and deeper, seven, six, as everything gets quieter, as you go deeper and deeper, five, four, three, two, one, finding yourself on the ground, deep underground, and you notice that you're in a corridor that's gently lit, and as you look at what's lighting the corridor, you realise that there are glowing mushrooms down both sides of this corridor, just casting the most beautiful green glow down the corridor. And you start taking steps down this corridor, and with each step, you notice blue flashes that flash blue and then twinkle gradually and then dim again, that happen under each footstep. And you realise that there's what looks like a moss creating a carpet down this corridor. And this moss seems to create light kinetically with each movement you take. It generates a little bit of electricity or a chemical reaction or something that seems to make each footstep create a flash of light that gradually twinkles out. And on that moss, each footstep just sounds so soft and feels so soft. And you walk down that corridor and at the end of the corridor you find another door And you open that door, and you're surprised because what you see the other side of the door looks like an attic. You can see old belongings piled up, belongings in boxes, a rocking horse just sitting in the corner with a teddy bear, sat on that rocking horse. You can see a chair up here. You can see daylight coming through a circular window on the far side of the attic. And so you walk into that attic and instantly notice the change in the sound of each footstep going from that soft moss to that wooden floor. And as you walk across those floorboards, you try to do so quietly in case someone's here. And you walk over to the far side. You look out that circular window. And as you get near the circular window, you can hear the sounds of seagulls and the sound of a rougher sea. And you look out that window and you can see the sea and you realise you're in an attic, in a house, overlooking the ocean. And you don't know whether anyone lives in this house. But you search for the hatch to the attic. And you find a hatch and see that there's a ladder on the top of it. And so you open that and lower the ladder. And you climb down that ladder. Closing that hatch behind you. And quietly walking through the house unsure whether anyone's here or not. And you head out the front door of the house. You take a look back to check the number and to see what the front of the house looks like, so that you can find your way back. And you can feel the bracing breeze 
of this seaside town. And you head down to the seafront. You can see fishing boats. You can see boats just pulled up on the shore. Seagulls walking on the shore, flying over the sea. Seeming to surf on a cushion of air just above the ocean, following waves as they travel in towards the shore. You take some deep breaths in of that air, breathing in that salty air. Remembering that it was once said that seaside air can heal all sorts of ailments, and you feel that air pass inside and through you and feel like you're breathing out any negativity, any stress and breathing in relaxation and healing and well-being. And you think to yourself about how strange this experience is how there seems to be this network of portals, that they're disguised in different forms. And yet there is a network of portals that seem to connect different places, perhaps even different universes. But this one seems very familiar. And you head down Along the seafront, you find somewhere selling ice cream. And although it's not really the weather for it, you feel like it's the right thing to do on the beach, is to have some ice cream. And you think to yourself that seagulls are less likely to steal your ice cream than if you had chips or something else here. And you sit on a bench, wrapped up warm, eating that ice cream, watching the way the white water froths and rolls in as the waves crash on the shore, hearing that sound of the water dragging out the stones back out to sea. Hearing the seabirds and wondering how you got here. And then, as you start to walk back along towards the house, you decide that you're going to start your journey home. You never really got to totally explore that palace. And you don't know how you're going to find your way back to the palace. And so you walk into that home, still unsure whether anyone's there. So you do so very quietly. And as you walk past the hallway mirror, you notice something odd about your reflection. You notice that your reflection seems to be slightly out of sync with you. And so you lean in closer to have a look at that reflection. And the reflection leans in to look back at you. But a fraction of a second after you lent in. And so you lean in closer still. And the reflection then leans to you. And then you go and touch the mirror, but find that you pass straight through it. And discover yourself in this mirrorverse. And as you look back, you see that reflection of you looking back at you in that corridor. And your corridor looks similar but different. 
And as you turn and look around the corridor, so you notice the reflection, a fraction of a second later, turning and looking around the corridor. And you head back up to the attic. Only this attic, something seems slightly different. And you head back to that tunnel. You walk through the door. You follow this tunnel. And something still feels slightly different. The lights still seem about the same. But there seems to be a different texture and a different frequency of flashing with each footstep you take. And you come out in those woods and you walk back past that cabin that you stayed in. And you start heading back to that railway station and you don't yet know whether there's going to be a train coming along or how you find your way out of this situation. Because you don't know where the portal is in relation to the train you were on. And back at the railway station, there's no train due yet. And so you head into the little cafe bit that's attached to the railway station. And this station's a bit different to how you remember it. Everything here seems freezing cold. Their cafe even is freezing cold. And you ask for a warm drink and they hand you a chocolate teapot. And that chocolate teapot is so cold, it's frozen solid. And you pour out a warm drink. And that warm drink begins to go cold as soon as it's poured. But you drink that drink anyway. And then after drinking the drink, while still waiting for the train, you snap off the spout of that teapot and start eating that spout. And the train still hasn't arrived. So you snap off the handle of the teapot and start eating that handle. And the train still hasn't arrived. So you start munching your way through the lid of the teapot. And you start wondering whether you're going to end up eating the whole thing by the time the train gets here. And after eating the lid, the train's still not here. So you pick up the body of the teapot and give it a firm thud on the table and you think to yourself it's like Easter all over again as it cracks into pieces and you crunch and eat those chocolate pieces and as you eat that last piece of teapot so with a flash you find yourself outside that painting, just stood there, looking on at that scene of a train travelling around a mountain. And you decide that that was the best portal so far. All you have to do is eat chocolate, and you get transported somewhere. And you hope that maybe you find another portal like that. But not just yet. You don't know whether you can have two chocolate teapots that quickly. 
and you decide to continue exploring the palace. As you follow a large staircase up to the next floor that curves around And you find that all the rooms are filled with white sheets, white fluffy blankets. That whoever lives here obviously likes white. And then when you go up those stairs, pass a few rooms, you notice there's a door at the end of the corridor that's closed and you go to that door you knock on the door and an elf answers that door and invites you in as if they've known you their whole life they ask if you want a drink and they sit down with you and they start explaining about the portals about how there are multiple worlds in multiple universes. But everything's connected like a lattice. It's a bit like Swiss cheese. That there are holes through everything, pathways from one point to another. And that often those pathways, those holes are near each other. because they're technically connected to each other. You're just hopping on and off those spaces. And that these portals are in space and time, connecting universes from the past, present, future. And that as there are an infinite number of universes, Anything that's possible is in a universe somewhere. And that some universes are only slightly different to others. And so they can feel incredibly familiar. And some universes are very different to others. And that it's easy to get lost in the multiverse. So you don't want to travel too much with too much curiosity all at once. You want curiosity, but you want to be measured with that curiosity. Knowing where you've come from. Knowing the journey you're on. And knowing where you're headed. And the elf walked to the window as they continued talking. And as you gazed over at that elf near the window, you noticed that the sun had long set and that it was night time outside now. And you walked over to join that elf at the window while they continued talking. And you noticed the most beautiful dancing lights in the sky. And you almost zoned out from what the elf was saying as you watched those lights dancing, shimmering with the twinkling blanket of stars. And the elf let you know that you're here up near the North Pole. And that not everything is always as it seems. That the front entrance can be in one location. Whereas other parts of this palace can actually, from the inside, be situated elsewhere. And you walk over to a bookcase. You feel drawn to this old looking book 
and the elf gives a gesture. And you pull a book off that bookcase. And you start reading through that book and just looking at what's on the different pages. And you realize that these books are about the portals. And this elf explains that they're one of the people who watches over the portals, travels through them, tries to understand them better, and tries to catalogue where they are in relation to here, and where they go. And they know that even within many lifetimes, there's no way that they'd be able to explore all the portals and all of the different universes. But they can explore the ones that are in this part of the multiverse, that are directly connected to here, that go through this palace area, and that that's enough to get on with for many lifetimes. And they catalogue what they find in the different multiverses and where they lead, almost creating a map through the multiverse. And they offered to help you understand that map through the multiverse. They said that they can help to transmit that straight to you so that you can easily navigate this area of the multiverse. And they said they just had to connect minds. So they asked you to sit down as they sat near you. They gently reached over, gently lifted up one of your arms lifting the arm up so it's almost at the same height as your shoulder. They then softly said, just close your eyes and begin to relax. And they gently tapped that arm so softly you couldn't tell whether they were holding the arm or whether you were holding the arm there as you drifted deeper inside. And then they rested their hand gently on your shoulder and started talking. And as they talked, so the knowledge of the multiverses began to join with your neural network becoming a part of who you are. And as that knowledge sunk in, so you drifted deeper into the experience. And they told you that you now have the knowledge of the multiverses, so that you can instinctively navigate those ones local to here. You know all the different routes in and out of the different multiverses and can explore them any time you want. And then after spending some time with the elf, you leave that palace. You head back over those rolling hills finding your way back to that purple portal and through coming out of that tree. And you go and head back and sit back down near that pond, listening to the ducks, thinking about all that you've learned, about the importance of the journey and of focusing on making the most of the journey. 
and knowing it's nice to have a destination to aim for. But sometimes the destination you end up at isn't the one you aimed for. You can't always control that. So you need to enjoy the journey. Sometimes you don't even reach the destination you aim for. So enjoying the journey is the way to get the most out of the experience. And being present in the moment. And after watching those ducks for a while, you head home and relax down in bed, feeling like you've had such a long day. Unsure of exactly how much time has passed. And thinking about all you've experienced. You comfortably and relaxed drift. Deeply asleep. 